Well, thanks for joining us. Knockout Chaos was promised here in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, and Knockout Chaos was well and truly delivered. A brutal, a devastating performance from Anthony Joshua. Talk to me, Andy Clark. You commentated on it. Brutal and devastating are two perfectly good adjectives for it. It was, it was savage. Mm -hmm. Knockouts never get old. No matter how many of them you see, they, they reach right into your soul because... When he got knocked down the first time on Garnu, he looked fairly clear-headed, but he was heavy. He was dumped right on his back. And from that point onwards, I thought, this is going to be very, very difficult for him now. But I didn't really anticipate a crunching knockout like that. When he went down from the second one, I don't think he really recovered from that. And then the finish when it came was, was absolutely sensational. Seeing him regain his feet, regain consciousness, then regain his feet is great because you don't want to see anybody stretch it out of a ring. They'll keep a close eye on him overnight, monitor him and make sure that all is well. But, I mean, it was, it was a hell of a shot from Joshua and it was just a fantastic, fantastic finish. And what a performance. Yeah. What it, a performance. It's, it's a big performance. It's a big statement. That second knockdown at the start of the second round, when Ngannou got up, when he looked around, he didn't know where he was. He looked like what? on earth is this and I guess that, that was a kind of a this is a real welcome to boxing from Anthony Joshua you thought that you thought you could come and do this this is what this is yeah it was it was and you know it's a very very cruel harsh business and Joshua demonstrated that with great eloquence there because I make you right he hadn't really recovered he would never have imagined in his worst nightmares that something like this could happen in Ghana. You, you, we've spoken to plenty between us, and we know that he's got that elite-level athlete's realism where yeah. they accept that, of course, you can lose. Anyone yeah. can lose, particularly in boxing. Anybody can get knocked out. But I don't think he ever really imagined that something like that could happen to him where he just got comprehensively dismantled yeah. in a matter of minutes. It's going to be an enormous blow to his pride and... And I think it's going to be quite difficult to get over, actually, for Ngannou, Johnny. But for AJ, it's just, I mean, it's all systems go. Because what people can't do now is try and take the shine off that and say, well, Ngannou was never that good in the first place. People will do it because people like to do, like to do that yeah. kind of thing, don't they? Yeah. But that just doesn't, it, it, it doesn't work. It's a cop-out because you look at the performance Fury put in against Ngannou, and yes, he was under par and forewarned his forearm and all of that. But the difference between those two performances, it was, it was night and day. Yeah. So, so on this, this, the, whole, the, the whole week, you've got to look at how the whole week went. Common sense says that should happen. That should have happened. Uh, I actually didn't think AJ would knock him out. I thought AJ would comprehensively outbox him. I thought a, a guy coming from another sport, MMA, whatever, should not be able to, to threaten any top 10 fight in, in any case. Tyson Fury, the pump that he had, of course, that's going to be reflected on. Tyson Fury probably is thinking, damn, because remember, in that fight, he said, I had a great training camp. So he can't say, well, I didn't perform to my best today. Am I lying today or was I lying yesterday? So so Tyson Fury, we know he didn't have a great training. It didn't do it right, prepare right for him. When a top 10 fighter prepares right for someone that comes into our sport, a professional novice came into our sport, no matter what he's done in any other sport, you can't play boxing. You can't, there's no, tra it's no transferable, you can't pretend, you be an ex-rugby player, you can't be an ex-MMA uh, fighter, whatever it is, and come in at top tier to try and control things. Not even Lomachenko could do that when he tried it, his, his first attempt at, at, um, at boxing Salido, for the world yeah. so, yeah. so what I'm saying to you is, so, so this is how it should have been day and night, and in every aspect. The only big question that we could build about the whole week was if, was if, if Ngannou landed on AJ, how would he react? And he, and he started quite. But how would he react? He, he but you know, but, but but AJ's skills, and that's what he said in the presser. Yeah. Skills, skills, skills. Former two two-time heavyweight champion of the world. For all the look at all the champions he'd beaten coming up. He'd won the Olympics. So that should have happened, regardless of what we say. So all the, the argument is the comparison. The comparison is, you know what? Yeah, the comparison is you're looking at Tyson Fury, looking at AJ. So in comparisons, AJ did a brilliant job because he prepared, prepared right, and that's what Tyson Fury should have done. So Tyson Fury was ringside. He was pictured, there was cameras on him whilst all of this happened. If you're Tyson Fury, what are you thinking, Andy? <laughs> you're thinking that you wish that you'd done a better job on him yourself because you know that the comparisons will be made. It's a strange sport boxing because 
the metrics are not straightforward and the best we've got is performances against common opponents particularly if they're close together and these two are close together you know what have you done for me lately is a question that people ask and in his last fight we know what Fury did and we know what Joshua has done in his most recent fight against the same person the circumstances are different yeah. as Johnny's just outlined there but the black and white of it is that Fury struggled and got knocked down and scraped by with a split decision and Joshua just absolutely demolished him. Let me give you an example because A can be B and B can lose to C and we saw that the fight before. Zhang against Parker. Parker yeah. got knocked out twice against... Um, uh, Parker got, uh, lost to Joe Joyce. Joe Joyce got turned over by Zhang. Look what's happened there. So it styles make fights and, and, and against the skill of, of the, the sport and... and Yes, I'm a boxing snob. You know, you, this, nobody should come into our sport to be able to compete successfully at such a high level. So this is what... I would have been disappointed if it was any other way. And I would have said, AJ, you need to pack in because you, this should not have happened. How are you going to get over this as a, as a guy that's done everything you've done and you let this guy come into our sport and do that to you? So that's what I would have said and that's what I said all week. Um, but, but, but it turned out how it should have turned out. So what sort of message tonight did Anthony Joshua send out to the heavyweight division? I think that he's well and truly back. You know, he was, he was a little bit muddled in his thinking for a while, I think that's fair to say, but he, he's teamed up with Ben Davison. That partnership's really working. He's got that clarity that you need at the top level. He knows exactly what he wants to try and do, and he delivered it. And on commentary, Dave Caldwell and Matt Macklin said from an early stage, Garni's wide open for the right hand. Joshua saw it, and he capitalised on it in the most effective way you possibly could. And that's, that's what you want to see because that's what he's always been. A fundamentally very sound boxer and solid, more than solid puncher who committed to his punches. And that's what he did tonight. Well, we're going to have a couple of press conferences here. First up, Joseph Parker with a big, big win over Big Bang Zhang. Hello. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. Hello. They built the table. Where you I'm a midget anyway. Don't look too tall that you ain't got them things. Uh, early good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm sure you all enjoyed the action this evening. It was just a, such a fabulous card. And we've got to thank His Excellency, Seller, uh, GGA, um, Gold Star. Matram, our fellow promoters, um, Queensbury, and more importantly, all the boxers who fought on the card, because I think they did a fantastic and stellar job between all of them. And it was such great value for money. And Joe's here at the moment, who's the new WBO interim champion and the mandatory challenger. <laughs> And he's the mandatory challenger now to the fight that takes place when we're back here again in Riyadh on the 18th of May for the biggest fight of this 21st century. Four belts on the line. Our man, Tyson Fury, against Usyk. That is a brilliant fight. The four belts are on the line. And after that fight, there'll be a winner, obviously. And all these guys who fought tonight, all these heavyweights, 
they're all going to be jostling to get into a position to challenge the winner. So it's fantastic for the heavyweight division. It's been so active. And it's really good in as much that how it keeps changing, how, how, how things keep turning around. People think that certain fighters are finished because they've had a d defeat. Um, Joe's turned everything around, was it now? Five on the spin? Yep. Five on the spin. Really fantastic wins and a fantastic <coughs> win tonight. AJ tonight, a brilliant, brilliant win. I mean, very emphatic. He's done it in fabulous style, having come off a great win against Wallin. So it's all looking really good for the future of all these guys to fight the winner, as I say, of the fight on the 18th. But tonight, as far as we're concerned right this moment, it's about Joe. He's managed David Higgins here. His advisors here as well, Spencer. And, you know, between all of them, they've done a great job. And obviously, Zhang was was with us. Um, there is a rematch clause, but we'll see what happens down the road with that. But we got a, we got a new champion. And uh, I'm sure... You'd much rather hear. Yeah. 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 Woo and I'm quite sure you'd much rather hear from him than hear any more of my rabbiting on. Off you go, mate. Thank you, Uncle Frank. <laughs> <laughs> um, just want to say thanks to uh, Excellency Turkey Al Sheikh. Thanks to Frank and, and Spencer for giving me the opportunity, David, to fight on this, uh, to, fight, to keep fighting back here in Saudi Arabia. It's amazing to come back and continue winning. It was a tough challenge tonight. Got caught with a few shots, but I was able to uh, keep calm and keep cool, um, keep focused on the plan, which was to box and move and be smart. But Zhang is a hell of a fighter with a big punch and a big bang. And he did, he did bang me a few times yeah. with that left hand, but I was able to recover, regroup and come back. So um, I'm very happy. I'm looking forward to flying home and spending some time with the family, see my wife and kids and um, just relax for a bit and then see what's next. If there are any questions. My nose, uh, there's a little scratch, a little cut and a little scratch and I was, um, I was a little worried when I, I, I felt it bleeding, you know? Um, but Zhang was a sharp shooter, and uh, I had to recover very quickly. And I'm, I'm very lucky and very fortunate and very blessed. I was in great shape. I um, worked very hard, so I was able to recover a lot quicker than a lot of other fighters, a lot of other fighters that are in the same position. Yeah, it, hurt, it, it's hurt, it hurts when you get punched in the face. <laughs> it's very by Big Bang. By Big Bang, yeah. Big Bang came to punch, and he landed some good shots, and it hurt. And I just had to, um, you know, I had to just in those moments, you have to really focus on trying your best to, to keep to the game plan and to box and being smart. Yes, young man. One thing in your, when you get knocked down, you're like, damn, I want to be, be in this promo clip. <laughs> you know the ones that they, they, they do when they knock you down? Yeah. And they keep showing you getting knocked down? And you get up again. And you get up, but like, you think it. about that. You're like, yeah. they're going to keep showing that when, they, when Jank fights. Is that what you thought in the fight when he knocked you down? Yeah, I thought, damn, I'm going to be in the clip. <laughs> and then I thought to myself, just, um, it's just a, a little, it's just a knockdown. And you don't prepare for it, but that's when you have to show true heart. Uh, what separates the old one from the new one would be uh, the team that I have. Like again, thanks to Frank and Spencer and, and David for getting me on these cards. But ultimately, um, Andy Lee and George Lockhart and the tremendous job that they've done with me in training camp. And all of that is, again, thanks to Tyson for introducing me to Andy Lee and to George Lockhart, his uh, nutritionist. Andy has rushed off to fly home. He's going to go see his family. Um, but he, the feedback was it was a very smart um, fight. And I had to be smart because uh, there was a big man in front of me. I had to keep composed, 
How did you keep composed and, and keep calm? Um, he told me that I, I did enough to win, but you never know. In boxing, things, uh, you might think you won, but you never know. So just leave it to the judges and the announcer to, to do their job. Thank you. I thought with my performance uh, to overcome being knocked down twice uh, was a courageous performance. And with Zhang, he was a tough, tough man. And he came to obviously to win and to, to, to bang me and to knock me down, but I was able to overcome all that. And um, I'm looking forward to what's next. What's next? Spencer, we've got to sort you out. Well, it's a rematch, uh, and if we don't do the rematch, there's three or four a fights there. A defence of your title. There's a rematch for us, but it's really up to these guys. Yeah, we'll work it out. And up here uh, to let see what the dust settle over the next yeah. week. And uh, you go and enjoy your victory and enjoy being with your family back home. Oh, so listen, I can't wait to be on in New Zealand. Yeah. Beautiful place yeah. and just to relax and um, do some fishing. Yeah, good <laughs> I want to go fish and eat some raw fish. Good man. So, one more question because you want to yeah. get away. One yeah. more question, guys. If no. I feel like our partnership is blossoming well. Uh, and it's not just Andy and myself, it's a three-man team. Me, myself, Andy, and George Locker, and we work very well together. Um, given the opportunity, we can show what we're, we're made of, what I'm made of with their help. Do you have any thoughts on AJ's performance? Now? Sensational. Sensational. It was a good performance. Very good performance. It's a brilliant performance. Brilliant performance. Brilliant like, performance. You can't ask for any... Emphatic. Yeah, emphatic. And you can't ask for a better performance. He looked very good. Okay. Congratulations to him and his team. So, thank you, everyone. Just before... Oh, sorry. Just one more question. Zhang does tire um, in a lot of fights, but we weren't banking on him getting tired. I could have went 20 rounds, but I had to be very smart in there and pick my shots and pick my moments, and, and that's what we've done. So Zhang's a hell of a fighter. Respect to him. I fought him as an amateur. He beat me in amateurs, and now I beat him in the pros, so it's, it's one each. Excellent. Thank you, everyone. Thank um, you. Thank you. And I'd just like to say one thing. I thought Nick Ball got absolutely rubbed tonight in the fight. He, he looks ex exceptionally well. It was a terrible decision. Terrible, terrible. Yeah, without, well, look, it's a split decision, and they would, I'm sure they, they would order a rematch. I don't know how, how on earth that, that decision... Sorry? Yeah, yeah, that's something to consider. But he, listen, he fought the best featherweight in the world, and he was better than the best yeah. featherweight in the world tonight. No doubt about that. And your thoughts on Mark Chamberlain? I thought Mark Chamberlain, Mark Chamberlain uh, was asked to come here by His Excellency, and uh, he delivered. He delivered. Sorry? Brilliant performance, and, uh, you know, very emphatic again, the stoppage. But, um, we just keep moving him forward, moving him up, and the objective is getting to a position to fight for a world title. And we're going to save up, and I'm going to then buy a higher chair for this table. <laughs> right, is everybody good? Thank you, guys. Safe journey home, and thank you for everything. I think uh, AJ and, and the team will be in here soon, so I'll leave you to it. Well, that was Joseph Parker and team, of course, Frank Warren there as well. A very, very impressive performance over Big Bang Zhang. That's two 
kind of upset big big wins for Parker right here in the kingdom it was Deontay Wilder back in December and now he's just beaten the man who stopped Joe Joyce twice big big moment for, for Joe Parker Absolutely, uh, another huge win. I, d I did fancy him in this one. I did pick him against Wilder. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna lie. I, I, I couldn't see how he was going to win that fight. But this time, I thought that he could take him into the second half, and and that that would be the way that he won the fight. But he was he was in it all the way through. And the key stages really was the end of the third round. He got put down by that lovely loose straight left hand, yeah. and he would have found that I think slightly shocking. He wasn't really hurt, but. I think he would have thought to himself, hmm, he put nothing into that. It barely travelled any distance. What am I doing down here? And then he got clipped a couple of times towards the end of the round, a left uppercut, right hook. And then Zhang started round four well. But midway through the round, he started to wrestle things back and he finished that fourth round strong, Parker. And that was absolutely key. That was absolutely key. And that's the kind of resilience and skill that he has, that he was able to do that. He was able to to stem that tide and kind of turn it back as quickly as he did. Because after that, I made him a, a clear enough winner of that fight. Obviously, he got put down again towards the end of the fight, yeah, in the eighth round, I think round, it was. Top, top yeah, game. exactly. And those two knockdowns made it, um, in, in points terms, quite close. Whereas in terms of round scores, if you like, it was, it was quite wide. I mean, I think I had him 8-4 in rounds. So by two points because of the knockdowns, but he was terrific. Yeah, he he is a massive problem for anybody. He, he anybody. Uh, I think Wally Downs just in that press conference there asked a terrific question about uh, people are talking about the link up between Ben Davison and Anthony Joshua being the most dangerous in the heavyweight division. Maybe it's actually Joe Parker and Andy Lee because what they are doing, the wins that they are pulling off, they are diffusing Deontay Wilder. They diffused the Big Bang after taking a couple tonight. They ultimately diffused him, took him, I guess, into the second half of the fight which Joe Joyce was unable to do Zhang by the way is absolutely adamant that he won he's seething okay I mean that so I'm not going to argue with him but at the <laughs> same time I didn't see that and, and nor did he at the end of the fight at the end of the fight he shrugged his shoulders and he had the look of a man who realized that he hadn't really done enough but what often happens when fighters lose their most honest reaction will be the first one you get. And that was kind of the first one we got. We didn't really hear him say anything, but his body language for me, it was fairly apparent that he didn't really feel like he'd won. Then they'll go away and think about it and they have to explain the defeat to themselves. They have to sell it to themselves, basically. And you could do that in a number of ways. And calling robbery is, is, is a tried and trusted way to do it. And it was pretty close. You know, there were a lot of close rounds, but in, in, in most of those close rounds... Parker outworked him. He outworked him, and that's why that's why he won the rounds. I, I didn't think there was anything wrong with the decision. I was slightly nervous about it because wow. I agree with what Frank Warren said there. I thought Nick Ball won that fight against Ray yeah. Vargas. Well, that felt like the robbery of the. Yeah, the I, yeah. I, I, no one will ever convince me that he didn't win that fight. Watching it uh, from ringside, uh, I just I, I didn't see those two cards. The seven-five in rounds to Vargas, which tied it up at a draw. I mean, at an absolute stretch, I can almost get there. But the 8-4 the in rounds was just an absolute nonsense for Massimo Baravecchio. An absolute that, nonsense. Yeah, that's but, the one where you're looking at you're thinking, where, where has that come from? Yeah, it was crazy. It, yeah. it, was, it was crazy. But, but no, Parker deserved it. He deserved it. And those are two absolutely massive wins. I mean, they're massive wins. They're two top five heavyweights he's taken down there, so aren't they? So what does that make him? Well, well I mean... Right now, look, <laughs> we talk about this. We have these big shows in Riyadh, and then as we're on the plane back, we're all talking like, what on earth just happened? So Anthony Joshua just got, got rid of Francis Ngannou in a manner that Tyson Fury didn't. Joe Parker just beat Gilles Zhang. What on earth is this top five at the moment? I don't know. It's difficult, isn't it? Because I mean, Fury did win against Fury Ngannou. Win. You know, it was a win. So I've always had him at, at number one, and I would keep him there yeah. for that reason um, Usyk would have to be at two because he's beaten Joshua twice you'd have to put Joshua at three this is the way I would look at it anyway yeah. other people would do it yeah. differently some, some people go by kind of touch or feel if you like and who they feel is hottest at the minute I tend to go on who's actually done who's what and, who and, and whether yeah. people like it or not Fury beat and Garnu yeah. um, four you would have to put Parker in at at four, I would say. But, mate, does he go ahead of Joshua? Does he go ahead of does Joshua? He go ahead of Joshua? Actually, I think he has to, doesn't he? Because he beat Wilder and Zhang. So you'd have to go, yeah, I think you'd go Fury, Usyk, Parker, 
Joshua. And then at five, I'm not sure who you have at five at the moment. I don't know. Do you go Zhang because he only just lost Yeah, I Barker? guess so. You probably do, I don't yeah. Know. You probably let do. Us know, let us know in the tricky. comments, it's by tricky. the way, what, what your top five is. But, um, yeah, it just keeps changing. The whole landscape keeps changing. And you know what's going to happen, right? May 18th, Tyson Fury will probably just walk through Alexander Usyk and we'll be like, what on earth has just happened now? Yeah, and this is the thing. That's, that's what makes it so fascinating. It, it, they, they were talking about the rematch there between Parker and Zhang. You've you got the vibe there that that's probably not going to happen. I mean, I guess Zhang could insist on it, in which case it would have a better chance of happening. But here, under this setup, you get the feeling that they just want to make the best possible fights. And if they don't really feel like there's that much demand for that rematch, and I'm not entirely sure there would be, then maybe it won't happen. They'll find something else for Zhang, possibly. Um, and it's a similar kind of thing with Fury Usyk. We know that there's uh, a rematch clause at both ends of that contract. Yeah. But if Fury beats Usyk, and that's a big if at the minute, but if he does, then what I would expect would be that they would swoop and they would make Fury Joshua. And I know that Usyk would be entitled to a rematch. And he would be reluctant not to have it immediately because his worry would be, well, what if Fury then beats Joshua and retires or something like that? Because that, that wouldn't be impossible, would it? But, but I just feel like they would jump on it and they would try and make Fury Joshua because that is just, it is the biggest fight. It feels like it. It feels like there will be a swell of interest in that tonight. Yeah. Because, look, Tyson Fury was very clearly, he was ringside. He watched, he, watched, he was clapping for the first knockdown. Uh, and then I'm, I'm not sure what, what was going on for the second one and the knockout itself, but... He was there. He watched everything happen, and it would have sent a real message to him. I'm keen to see if there are any exchanges between AJ and Fury as well. I know they, they shared a room in the week as well, but if there's anything tonight, it would be very, very interesting. But the, that fight's just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. It is, and you know what? I think what happened tonight, I think, I, I think it's probably a good thing for Fury because it, it'll just lock him in even more on this fight against Usyk, I think. Even more. It'll focus his mind sharpen that focus even more than it all it already is he, he looks really good by the way doesn't yeah, he yeah. having seen him around this week yeah. he looks really well I think the weight is he said to us he was about 19 stone he looks in good shape when you look at his kind of waist um, his skin looks good you know things like that tell you how well somebody's been living basically and I think he I think he looks he looks yeah he does he looks terrific Tyson being Tyson, he may well come. He could, he could say anything, couldn't he, during the week? But what we know is that there is a lot of respect between these fighters. Oh, absolutely. He, he, he said yeah. to us again during the week, he, he said, listen, people talk about chins and it's, it's nonsense. If any of us hit any of the others hard enough and we're not really ready for it, anyone's going. Mm -hmm. And, and they, they all know that. So he will, have, he will have been impressed by Joshua's performance. He will have respected it. Yeah. How, how could you not? How can you not? How could you not? Uh, but he still thinks that he'll smash everybody because that's that's him, does. and they all do, and that's what you know. That's what makes them who they are. Absolutely. Look, I saw comments from Fury saying that he'd smash and in a street fight as well. They've all got yeah. to have that belief, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And that's you know just to revert to something we were talking to Johnny about. That's what will make this really hard for Francis yeah. Ngannou. It will be hard because I could say everybody accepts every fighter I've spoken to who's in any way realistic. They all accept that they could lose. But really, they think there's certain ways in which they, that, that can't happen to me. Yeah. Well, look, we talked about all of this. We talked about Ngannou has taken elbows to the head. Mm. He's taken kicks to the head. He's taken punches to the head in smaller gloves. That was a shock, what happened to him, for him. Oh, it was. It was yeah. absolutely seismic. Uh, and that's the difference between being hit by somebody with, I think they wear three or four ounce in MMA, four don't ounce, they? And, yeah. and then you getting hit with a 10-ounce glove worn by someone who really knows how to yeah. punch. It's a different story. And look, I don't think he needed to take that last punch, in my opinion. Are you, are you with me on that? Um, I know what you mean, but I think if the referee stopped it after the second knockdown, then people would have complained. It's, 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 this is the hurt business. And... Sometimes, you know, a knockout is a natural conclusion to a fight, as, yeah. as, as brutal though that is. You know, otherwise, you know, what are we doing here, really? You know, a knockout is it's a big part of boxing, and we all want anyone who gets knocked out to get back to their feet and to be okay. It's this crazy moment where we want to see it, and then all of a sudden, the temperature in the room drops because somebody's out unconscious on their back and all of a sudden you wish it hadn't happened it's, yeah. it's, it's a really strange conflicting thing but you know I, think the ref I don't think the referee should have stopped it after the second knockdown 
Well, there's more, uh, more and more noise uh, gathering in this room as I see Eddie Hearn taking his seat at the top table, Freddie Cunningham up there as well, which means Anthony Joshua will be close by. I'm not sure if Eddie's going to start the, the post-fight press conference without him. He's probably him. got quite a lot to say. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Here he is. Let- Tyler, <laughs> stupid ass. Well, well, everybody, uh, we'll, if we can keep it nice and calm, if we can move it on, if it's 4.30 in the morning here, local time, but it's okay. It's okay, because tonight you saw one of the most devastating knockouts I have ever seen live from, in my opinion, the baddest man in the planet. That is how you do it. That is how you deal with it. And uh, over to the floor for questions. But before we go to the floor for questions, AJ, just a couple of words. A beautiful performance, a great event again in Saudi. God is good, God is good, God is good. We got the W. Um, thanks to my coach as well. You know, um, let, yeah, honestly, thank you as well. Do you know what it is? Um, we get in there, we give our best, and these guys, like, they put in a lot of time to push me in the gym. Shout out to all my sparring partners as well. But yeah, as I say, just want to give a thanks to my team, my, my extended team as well. They're all out there. The man them as well, my family and friends that support me as well, my close-knit family and friends. And God is good. That's what I just keep on saying. Um, and thank you to Francis Ngannou as well for taking part and making boxing great again. Okay, guys, to the floor for questions. If you, if you wait until uh, you're called for the question. Yes, ready. Is this live? Yeah. Is it? On what channel? Uh... Queen Shock. Queen. Shock. 258.com. <laughs> Shock. What are going to say, like the zone or something? Like that. <laughs> yeah, that as well. <laughs> <laughs> Same thing. <laughs> yeah. Mm, who knows? Who knows? At the time, you're just doing what you do. You're just in that, in that flow state going with the flow, riding the wave. And, um, yeah, everything worked out in my favor in the end. But, you know, he's a big guy, strong guy, talented guy. So he got up. He looked pretty stable. So I just thought, just keep doing what I'm doing. Don't get carried away. And uh, what will be, will be. And um, we managed to drop him, I think it was three times before, well, one, two, and then third one out. So the first time it was like, okay, he got back up. He looks good. And just stay consistent. Uh, in terms of game plan, you have to ask my coach. But for me, you have to have the will to win. You can have a game plan, but if you ain't got the will to follow it through, you ain't going to do it. Because it's one thing showing you to do it, and it's another thing actually doing it with someone in front of you. So, yeah, um, i got the will to win, and that's what's most important. Yeah, sir. Yes. AJ, congratulations, first of all. Thank you, bro. Uh, Um, I, <laughs> did I expect to win? I give my best. I don't like to predict anything. I'm telling you, yeah. Heavyweight boxing is a a league of its own. Um, it's a different division, so anything can happen. I just, you know, work hard, extremely hard. I think I can work a bit harder, be a bit more dedicated. But I work as hard as I can, and um, put the rest in God's hands in it. And what will be will be. And it finished early because I say that destiny's already written in it. So. If it was meant to go, then it was meant to go. If it was meant to go 10 rounds, it was meant to go 10 rounds. If I was going to win, I won. If I wasn't, I wasn't. I don't overcomplicate it. We, we got the job done. And you know what's the best thing? Is I can get back to the gym and build on, a, on another solid training camp. And then I can get back in the ring and do another job. That's what I'm happy about. Thank you. Matt. Yeah. Nah, I didn't feel anything. Half of these people thought that he was going to beat me. I know I can see all you lot. You lot all thought he was going to beat me. So I just do what I do, do my best. We've got the job done, but I don't do it to prove anything. I just do it for myself.
I'm going to repeat what Ben says. I've always had a tool bag full of tools. Ben just showed me which ones to use at the right job. And that's what it is. So we, we work well together. Yeah, he's just showing me which tools to use for the job. Tom? Yeah, he can, he's very strong. I think he should continue in boxing. Because um, heavyweight boxing, as I said, it's a league of its own. You get the big punches, you get people that are quick, you get um, like a fudding, a fudding power, you get like a snapping, like a lightning strike kind of power, and he's up there in terms of power. In the clinch, I felt fine, though. I felt cool. I thought, hang on a minute, I could probably take him in UFC, actually. When I did a bit of pushing and pulling, and I thought, oh, I know, I'm, I'm all right. I thought I'd be getting flung everywhere. <laughs> But no, nah, I'm joking. He's strong. Um, but I stand my ground. It's a fight. And the, the, it was in my favor tonight, you know. Um, and we move on to the next. Do you think, uh, sorry, do you think um, the Scottish MMA fighters can make any crossover? Nah, no. He, he, Francis Ngannou beat the WBC heavyweight champion of the world. I should be WBC heavyweight champion of the world right now. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> I think he beat the WBC he's champion. Maurizio, actually, see if it's <laughs> he's a great fighter, man. Honestly, he's a great fighter. He's done well. And he's a dreamer. He's a risk taker. Look at what he's done. Honestly, that story of his, I don't think it should be um, clouded by tonight. He's um, come a long way, and I still think he's got a long way to go. Andy? No, 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 no. I'm chilling, bro. I don't, I don't want that title. I don't want that pressure. I just do my thing. I'm just looking forward to getting back to the ends, as they call it. I'm just looking forward to getting back to the gym and just keeping it simple. I don't want that title as the baddest man on the planet. Tyson, oh. was he a fight? Yeah. If they pay me. <laughs> I, got, I got training to attend to. Do you know what I'm saying? I focus on my own. I focus on myself. Unless it's business. But... If, if they want to do business, let's get, let's go. But if it's not about business, I'm focusing on myself. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you told us the other day that no one's ever put a dent in the sky and you were banking on a knockout. Did you interview him, Gandhi? Yeah, I did. I recognize your voice. Yeah, was it in like a one on one interview? In a, it was. Yeah, I recognize your voice. It was very respectful towards you. But you said that no you one thought one. he was going to beat me, in it? I could tell by the question. I could tell by the questions you were asking. MMA junkie, is, it is he MMA junkie? Yeah, I yeah, see yeah. what I said. Yeah. I'm not. He's outlets MMA junkie. Yeah. I can recognize that voice. I was thinking, whoever this guy is, I know I'm going to see him one day. But <laughs> <laughs> I tell people I watch everything. I study everything. You okay down there? Or? <laughs> um, not really. Not really. Um, you, ben will tell you more, but um, these guys can predict the future. They can predict the future. <laughs> we just, I just got to follow through and do what I'm told to do. So, yeah. But, yeah, I'm happy. I'm happy. Yeah. You know what it is? I'm a very balanced person, you know. It doesn't kind of boost my confidence. And I don't get too, well, I did get down once, as you all saw, but I try not to get too down when things aren't going my way. But, yeah, I'm just chilling, just chilling, not getting too ahead of myself and um, just rolling on to the next one, do you know what I mean? I'm going to keep it simple, not get too ahead of myself, keep it basic, and then just on to the next one. Yeah. Hello. John Mayer. Joel Mayer. Joel Mayer, nice to meet you. as I said, um, don't let this discourage you, you know, don't let success get to your head and you should never let failures get to your heart. Um, I think you're, and I told him, I think he's an asset to boxing, he's an asset to the fight game, don't be discouraged and um, I respect you regardless. I said it before and I still stand on it, I know we had to fight but that's what I say I mean, so I just told him like, keep your head high and also, lastly I said, I'd, if he hears this in Cameroon, 
I know he's got his charity and his organization. Yeah. Also, people that are trying to make it from uh, Africa over to different continents, people that are struggling. I just said, I want to link up with him and see if we can uh, do some good work for the African community as well. I think he, I, his team took listen more. Yeah, I think it's hard. I'm having a gen, yeah. I think he's he wasn't fully aware of what I'm saying, but his team took it on board. But I think he took the part where I'm just like, keep your head high. Don't let this shade all everything that you've been through and everything that's yet to come in your career. Yeah. Five guys. Yeah. Hello. Good to see you again. Do you think this might already be one of the knockout contenders of the year? It's still early on in the year. We've still got many more fights to happen, but who knows, bro? I'll let you guys decide. When you landed the title punch, how did it feel for you? Um, it felt normal. What did he say? <laughs> what did he say? It felt, it felt normal. It's, we just do what we do. You know what it is? As a fighter, right? I just do what I do, give it my best, and what will be will be. I don't get too ahead of myself with a victory because it's, it's thin margins when it comes to heavyweight boxing, so I don't get too ahead of myself. I've got to keep my feet on the ground. So i just done what I needed to do to move on to the next stage. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. does a hell of a lot of, of that side of things, putting together a scouting report and that. And um, obviously he had a look at certain tendencies that he had in his MMA career, certain tendencies that he had in the Tyson Fury fight. And we was confident that we gathered enough information there to be able to put a plan together to, to see us to victory. What was it you? Well, Andy, wait, right, yeah. Hello. 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 Would you ever... Right, you're calling me influencer now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> next question. Yeah, next question. It's a dangerous game, yeah. man. Like, he's a he's a champion. He is a champion. Would I ever fight a champion again? Hundred percent. Wally. <laughs> you're funny. <laughs> Wally, yeah. A mixture. What was that? What was that? What? A mixture. Can you sit there? Can sit next to you? Yeah, this one. How you jump? Good job. Onto the next one. Okay, guys, you're right here. those two there's so many other fighters that I want to compete with but since you're asking me about the winner I think both of them are very credible uh, fighters and I'd love the opportunity to face them at some stage um, whichever one's the fans favorite because realistically that's all we do it for um, we do it for the fans and yeah so whichever one's well, who, who, in here who's the better fighter to fight anyone got any suggestions Shuri or Usyk yeah. Whoever wins, whoever wins Fury. Yeah. Fury, whoever wins. Yeah, I'm, I'm easy. I think Eddie will look at the business and all that type of stuff and then present to me the opportunity and then we'll go from there. Yeah. Let's go. Well, I speak to the team. I go back to the cage and I just get the letter through the door when it's time to work. And I'm just, where are we going? I don't mind. I'd love to fight back in the UK, but... Whatever the, the team want to do, I'm, I'm happy with. Uh, Francis, I want to say congratulations. Obviously, everybody always says to you about how 
motivational as you are, I mean, we all know that your story is most encouraging, but do you ever actually take in, you know, how far you've come, the things you've achieved, and how many people you've actually inspired? Well, um, I think I was just trying to collect as, collect as much as possible to make the account after, you know. Um, I do not stop and start to make what I, uh, account on what I have done. I was just on my way climbing up until I get stopped by AJ. Congratulations, by the way. That was a clean one, you know. So, yeah. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Yeah, at the back. Yeah. Let's go. Let's go. I lie. Let's go. What's next? Let's keep on going. I'm not here forever, innit? No one lives forever. No one does this forever. So let's go. Let's make. Let's make hay while the sun shines, and then it'll all be done one day. So if there's an opportunity to go again, I'm ready in June, July. You know what I'm saying? All right, a few more. Wally again. Francis, you were top Tyson Fury. You were inspired the likes of Joe Joyce. How special was he and powerful is that man right there? Well, he was quite special because he stopped me. He did what Tyson Fury couldn't uh, you know. could have done, you know. And, um, know? you know, he wasn't my day, and he was, he's just way better than me today. So, yeah, it sucks, but it's the game. We all it's know the that. Game, my bro. Is that the hardest you've ever been hit? Huh? Is that the hardest you've ever been hit? So, in fact, I didn't feel the punch. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's what, that's what the knockout is about. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't feel any pain. <laughs> Derek. That's how I know I was knocked out. <laughs> <laughs> this is for Francis. You know, Francis, I've been doing a lot of interviews, and I came up with a nickname for you. I called you the Superman of Africa because the way you have come up in the game, Flex, everything yeah. you've done, has been an amazing for us Africans. Yeah. And, uh, and I tell you, the best name for, for me to give to you is the Superman of Africa because most kids in Africa right now look up to you. 100%. What you have achieved so far. Keep on going. Thank you, bro. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Thank you. Just a couple more guys. Yeah, again. MMA junkie. <laughs> you know, as for right now, I think I'm going to go home, get some rest, uh, process what just happened. You know, uh, this has been a hell of a day uh, since this morning. I'll process it and then uh, see what is the next step. But maybe MMA, but uh, you can be sure that I'm not done here. Absolutely oh, not. Sorry, that's the energy. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not done. Stress of getting to undisputed. Um, yeah, one step at a time. I was just thinking one step at a time. It's it's hard to become a champion, let alone a unified champion, let alone an undisputed champion. So I'm just saying that it's far, far fetched. Um, it's close. It's close. But who knows? That's what I said earlier. Is like we plan, but it's certain things are already written. So if I get there. I get there, and if I don't, I don't, but I'm not going to put too much pressure on myself anymore. Right, guys, it's 10 to 5. One more question. Bush kid, the legend himself. Let's give him a round of applause as well. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think people know who this guy is. It's a legend. <laughs> We're gonna do it right. right. Okay. <laughs> the legend.
legend. Guys, thank you. No, wait, wait. Go, let, what? Let, let, him ask, let him ask. You know what, bro? It wasn't even a question. I, I just want to say, you've got like a new, calm, like, attitude and persona, and it's great, bro. And Serious. I wish you the best success, bro. And you as well, and I appreciate it. And everyone in here as well. I wish everyone more life, more prosperity, um, and to their families as well. Remember, life is short. No one ever stays here forever. So tomorrow when you wake up, give thanks, give thanks, give thanks. And thank you for everything. Yeah, thank you. Guys, just this. That 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 that's mine. Heartless crew bought the whole shop. Some people thought that really jack pop, but now no no no, I'll be working hard. <laughs> Alright, wait. What's the one that? What's the one that we listen to in your gym? Can we go Novi and order a porn star? What's the one that? Kate, what's the one? What's it called? Interlude. Interlude. Bro, we play that song every day. Is it, is it probably? Yeah. yeah. Shout out to Trapper as well. The legend is up. Yeah. Take your moment. <laughs> Take your moment. No? We're, we're, we're doing, uh, I just want to thank everybody in here as well for all your work this week. Thank His Excellency Turkey Al Sheikh yeah. and everybody else. Most of all, as always, I want to thank the fighters, Francis and Garner. You're a gentleman Pleasure. and a hero. Hey, Jay, we're proud thank of you, everyone. mate. On to the next one. Thank you so much. We'll see you soon. Thank you all. Joshua did a great job, and I think um, even if I was different, I think maybe things was, would have said be the same. But this wasn't my day. I woke up today and I felt like this wasn't my day. Every, 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 every.